It's time for buddy games here on the Hit or Quit podcast, where we're talking about the weirdest and sometimes worst reality TV shows on television. I'm Rob Sestronino, back here with my forever buddy. Here she is. It's Jenny Autumn. Jenny, how are you? I'm here with my butty butty. Butty. Jenny is my <laughs> butty butty. <laughs> Is that an elephant? I you can't. No, <laughs> that was so much more louder and aggressive than I remember the bugle from the show. But I... the bugle <laughs> is very important to the mythos of Buddy Games. If you did not see the premiere of Buddy Games, Jenny Autumn and I are here to talk you through everything that happened in episode number one of the new CBS Smash reality hit. Buddy Games on the world's only reality TV recap of Buddy Games. That's right. Josh Dumel, <laughs> we would love to talk to you. Please d- send yourself and not a cardboard cutout. We want yes. the real Josh Dumel. We, we need you. Okay, if you want to subscribe to our coverage of Buddy Games here on Hit or Quit, the podcast where we decide if a reality TV show is a hit or if we should quit watching, go to robiswebsite.com slash hit or quit feed. Jenny, how are you doing after night one of Buddy Games? I, I will say <laughs> this was... This was fun. This was fun. Yes. I I will I will say also that I think I found the show I want to be on the most. Yes. <laughs> All right. Jenny is a buddy game stan. I I don't know if I'm ready to say that. Listen, like it's it's only the first date, yeah. you know. Um okay. win a date I'm gonna keep with my expectations Pat Hamilton. Low. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, so but we, it was it was fun. It was different. All right. We're going to talk through Buddy Games here and tell you what it is, what it isn't, how it works, to the best of our knowledge, and tell you about our number one of uh, Buddy Games, the new summer camp-themed reality TV series hosted by star of uh, film and screen, Josh Dumel, returning to television after his uh, long-running hit Las Vegas, he's back for Buddy Games, adapted from the real-life Buddy Olympics that Josh Dumel and pals have done in real life, IRL, for over 20 years. Which is wild. I also only just found out that he's 50, like, last night. Yeah. I mean... Last last night, America on Big Brother 25 called him a certified zaddy. And Josh Duval is a certified zaddy. Yeah. Yeah. I think I agree. Like, okay. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Josh Duval, I mean, <laughs> uh, win a date with Ted Hamilton for sure. I mean, certified heartthrob uh, uh, back in the day. Now, I really feel like he makes a living at being like perfectly unkempt. Yeah, and I think that that's what I like. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that I I am so much of a fan of like peak Josh Duhamel. Like I like the the salt and pepper like of it now. all. Yeah. Like yeah, and in covered in mud. And he's giving like quarantine chic realness. Yeah, and that bugle. Yeah, on that horn, baby. <laughs> the bugle is a big part of Buddy Games. And I had so no idea it was such a big part. <laughs> maybe some of our new podcast listeners don't realize that the Buddy Games IP, the concept Buddy Games, has spawned not one but two Buddy Games movies. Wild. And one of them only came out in 2023. The first one was 2019. The second one was what, called Spring Awakening or something yes. like that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I watched the trailer for it the other day and Spring Awakening boy, the- what a ride, what a ride for buddy games, colon <laughs> spring <laughs> awakening where the buddy games crew goes on spring break. Yeah. Um, I it's mean, I almost feel like Paramount we plus we're obligated to cover it because of the colon. Mm-hmm. Like kind of yeah. what we do here yeah uh <laughs> but i and i also saw uh have i watched these films no no um, but you will did, but you want did to. i at least look at the wikipedia page for them yes i did because i did want to know where they were filmed um because everything about like the buddy games vibe and like imagery is very um 
Canada. Oh. I feel so I grew I grew up in a place in Canada known an area in Canada yes. known as Muskoka. It's like some people describe it as the Hamptons of the North. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's like lakes. Lots of rich people have cottages on lakes here. And by cottages, I mean like multi-million dollar homes that are like their lake house. Um, the the chair in the Big Brother 25 comp last night that Josh Jumel was there for, that is called a Muskoka chair. So Muskoka this was, chair. So this is all very familiar to me. Um the doing silly things at the lake like this is what people do for like their bachelor parties honestly like this is kind of like my dream bachelorette party is like renting like a cottage cabin or whatever you want to call it on the lake and like having all your friends there and maybe playing a game so Josh Kumel is not from Canada, but he is from North Dakota, which is pretty close, close. enough. It borders enough. Canada. So yeah, he's right there. And so I guess the the first but because I was like, did they ever do this in Canada? Because, you know, it's it just seems very Canadian to me. Mm-hmm. Um, the flannel, like, listen, you see the, the get up today. Like, I am buddy games chic tonight. Okay. Yeah. Um, the first movie was filmed in Vancouver. So but okay. that's like lots of things are filmed in Vancouver. It's not like I don't know. But this is apparently so the 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 show is filmed in Colombia, not British Colombia. Mm-hmm. The the country Colombia. Yes. Um so and then I think the I can't remember where the the spring the spring break one's probably like <laughs> a hot place, right? Yeah, I think that they are sort of out of the Buddy Games uh, original locale. Again, I I don't want to, like, spoil the movie. Yeah, please uh, do not spoil it because people are probably planning to turn this podcast off and go watch both movies. Right, going to go watch uh, two two Buddy Games films. All right, so Josh Dumel is here, and he is psyched about the madness that is the buddy games the buddy games involves six teams of four 24 mm-hmm. participants that are competing for what jenny rob we have covered many shows on hit or, hit quit, or quit here yep. and sometimes there's prizes sometimes there is not and i am happy to confirm there is a c- cash prize for buddy games because i did not know going into the episode whether that was the case i was like what are we doing here what is this show um what is the point generally the feeling i have when i start one of these shows uh there is a prize of two hundred thousand dollars wow i mean so some real cash on the line for buddy games that's not nothing so i think that's double the prize money for claim to fame and that was a much harder show i think yeah and we want stakes. And, and okay? there are a lot of Nepo babies on Claim to Fame. Exactly. Exactly. Well, and I mean, it's probably better that way because one, only one person gets the money on Claim to Fame. And also they might have access to money by being related yeah. to celebrities. Imagine However, somebody's this, related to Josh Dumel on a future Claim to Fame. And there's like Buddy Games point, Clues. The bugle. The bugle's on the, the bugle, clue yeah. wall. <laughs> the bugle is going to become mm-hmm. a future clue on the clue mm-hmm. wall. For- There's the transformer, like yeah. a postcard from Las Vegas. It's Josh <laughs> Mel. <laughs> yeah. Get ready. That's happening. That's the crossover I'm ready for. Um, so it's two thousand two hundred thousand dollars, and Do- Josh says only the bestest of friends will make it to the end. So it sounds like it's a splittable prize because as we get sure. reveal, not to get too ahead. But people will go home. There are eliminations. It's not we're just here having a good time. There are stakes. There are eliminations. Um, but if I understand the concept of the show properly and the game mechanics, that 200K will probably end up being split between at least three people. At least three, three or four people. people. Yeah. And- because... If yeah. you lose more than one, you're gone. <laughs> right. And the concept of buddy games, as advertised by Josh Dumel, is that, hey, we had friends when we were young. Speak for yourself, Josh Dumel. Okay. <laughs> we went to Bro. camp. We had friends, lifelong friends. And you know what? Life 
is a B word, and we don't get to <laughs> spend that? the time with our with our you know our our bros and our lady friends uh, that we would like to. You were going years. for the rhyme on that one. Nope, nope. Okay, and okay, so okay. as we hear a soundtrack of Bruce Springsteen Glory Days, I, they did not cheap out on the music budget. No, for we got the Offspring later. Yeah, we got we got the Boss and we got the Offspring. So yeah, and so you grew up with your friends, you grew apart from your friends, and Buddy Games is one last chance to compete with your old pals. That being said. I don't really think that that applied to most of the teams that were here on buddy games. So I think that that is maybe the story for Josh and his, and I don't even necessarily think that they grew apart because a lot of these people's stories are like, we, you know, we live around the corner from each other. Our kids are friends and like stuff like that. So some of these people are still kind of Bessies, but the story is that life gets busy. You have families, you have jobs, you have responsibilities, and you don't have the opportunity or the time to relive those glory days. Thank you, Bruce. Bugle. Um, and so, <laughs> we need the remix with the bugle. So, yeah, th I think that that's kind of the energy is that, like, it's been this is we had a time in our life where it was all about us just like having fun together and just being buddies. And now we don't get that anymore. So, this is the this is the perfect opportunity to leave my job behind leave yeah. my kids behind and just get back to what made us bond and the buddy games teams they are bust in uh on a school bus Literal like it's school going bus. to camp it's giving camp vibes all the way <laughs> on buddy games they yeah. will compete in competitions against each other they will live in a buddy games lodge now Jenny, I was very excited about the Buddy Games Lodge, but a little disappointed yeah. we didn't see a lot of lodge life in our yes. number one of Buddy Games. Now, based on the preview of the season and just like some of the like clips of future episodes that we got teased on, I'm hopeful that we will get more of like lodge yes. life. Because I feel like we got like lots of clips of like it was it's almost like on the challenge where like on the off days, like they go to the bar and get drunk and like they're socializing and stuff. Um, I feel like we're going to get some of that because we didn't really get a ton of it in this episode. But I also understand it's like we're having to set up the point of the game, the teams, like a little bit of introductory stuff. So I think that maybe in future episodes, yeah. we might be able to delve a little bit more into Lodge Life. I would like to see more of the Lodge. More of the Lodge, yeah. That's there was a shuffleboard. There was shuffleboard. There's dartboard. I want to go, like, that's why I want to be on this show. Like, how sick is this? Like, it's just, imagine the Big Brother house, but it's more, it's actually just designed like an a Lodge. And then also there's, more than one game there <laughs> so yeah and you probably can go outside you can compete in lots of different games and maybe yeah. there's drinking also that's going on also that helps yeah. have they even had a booze delivery on big brother 20 no no not, not allowed anymore and buddy yeah. games i think there's gonna be a lot of drinking going on i saw some so, miller yeah. lights being cracked in this episode so jenny <laughs> this is really my tldr for buddy games episode number one it's i think an interesting concept i'd like to see more of the lodge i thought episode <laughs> number one it certainly piqued my interest, but yes. I feel like for me to be a buddy games, true Stan that I think we need to get into a little bit more of the hijinks at the lodge. For sure. We need hijinks. We, I because people need to be hooking up fighting. I want to see more like uh, intra team inter team uh, situations happening yes. now. So here's the thing, because the teams are are of real people that know each other, like real relationships, um, I do think that that does help the potential for infighting because, and I feel like we kind of get that teased later because, you know, you know, it's like, it's like on Amazing Race where you've got, you know, teams of two 
and they are arguing, they're put under pressure and they're competing and the stress gets them. And you always lash out at the person that you love the most because we are psychologically all very messed up. Um, and so I think we will definitely get like a little bit of infighting, but I, I agree with you. I'm hoping that we do get drama between the teams. Um, now, Rob, you're asking for hookups. Like yeah, we know that Josh Jamel the, wants the, it. The married people. Yeah. The Josh Jamel was asking for hookups in the big brother house. So. But I, like, I don't know who's, hook, who's hooking up. Like, I don't know the marital status of all these people, except for the two people from uh, Philly, Philly forever, Philly yes. forever who are married. Yes. Um, married. <laughs> um, they are like, I know their marital status and there's a few people that are talk that talk about being married. So I don't know that there's like a lot of hot, sexy singles here. Rob. No, I don't know who, how many people are there are single ready to mingle. Maybe they should have had an all singles team, but anyway, let's talk about the six teams that are yes. here on buddy games. Okay. And why don't we give them in order of how they finish the first competition the here. Curveball. The Yeah. Okay. The first competition that they're going to do, it's a bit of an obstacle course. Uh, we'll talk through that there is a big decision that has to be made to uh, drag, swag, swag. or gag. gag. It, yeah, yes. it's giving, what is it, sweat or savvy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but with yep. a third option. <laughs> with a third option. Okay, we'll yeah. talk about what all those mean. Okay, uh, we have Team OK, Team Oklahoma. I do oh. think that this is the team that does most embody what I believe the idea of Buddy Games is supposed to be. These are friends from Oklahoma. They grew up together or at least were in college together. I think this is the team that closely replicates Josh Dumel and his real life friends. Yeah. And, and cause it's a bunch of guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I think that that probably also like, you know, it, that, that is probably the closest to the vision. Um, and I also think that there was like a montage um, in their little package where they did something called man games um yeah. there was like <laughs> there was like a, a photo of them like with other people posing with a big board that said man games i think it was like a scoreboard or something right so the, these guys have been doing buddy games already in their right. own time there might have been like a reddit thread that's like hey do you and your buddies play games and they were the only people that responded and yeah, that's okay. how they got these guys. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> the second group, Jenny, are the pageant queens. Uh, these are not lifelong friends. Uh, no. These are four women who are moms who have all been in like Miss USA competitions. Yeah, but didn't they call it Mrs. USA? And I are swear they in to Mrs. God, USA? what like which I didn't know was a thing. There's um, so many different things. That like I know are there's a like, lot, but yeah. I think that so I I need to know the distinction between Miss USA and Mrs. USA. Like, do they have a specific pageant for married people, like married women? Because that's funny. I don't like, I don't understand this world whatsoever, but that I swear to God, at least one of the pictures we saw, they were wearing the sash that said oh, Mrs. Something. Okay. Yes. All right. So I, I found a, a, a good thread. Uh, this Perfect. is from the sun. Uh, and so oh, great I about the, uh, the pageant Queens. Uh, okay. They are made up of Lauren, Lourdes, Yoli and Erica. Um, uh, they all have really nicknames say, though on yeah, the show. Have, they all like have you'll get, yeah, you're never gonna learn these people's names because okay. they all have nicknames. Here, let me share with you. Okay, uh, here are the the pageant queens, but no word on if they're Mrs. America, Ms. America, Miss America. Yeah. So here they are, team pageant I, like, queens. Are they? Are they pre like? And they're from different. Oh, they're okay. So I'm looking at another page. One of them's from Colorado, one's from Maryland, and then two of them are from Virginia. Yeah. So I don't know how much time these people spend together, uh, where exactly they met. Like, they clearly said that they met through the pageant world. But mm -hmm. to me, this isn't giving we hang out once, like, biweekly. Like, we have yeah. girls wine night. Like, no, they, no. they don't even live in the same state. never met each other state. before. Like, maybe maybe yeah. they, like, uh, have, like, shook hands at something. Okay. Uh, Which and is, then, like, against the spirit of buddy games. That's what games. I'm saying. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Okay. Here's Team OK. Now, Jenny, <laughs> if I told you that in this is not actually Team OK, 
This is uh, the four men at the center of Farmer Wants a Wife season two. Would you buy that? <laughs> oh God, it's just it's just okay, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just okay. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, they're rocking none the, of these the people... cutoff shorts. <laughs> Oh my god! Okay. I didn't even notice the jorts. They're not mm-hmm. even. They're not even full jean pants. Those are yeah. jorts. They Can't all have the stressing on them. Buddy games. Yep. And the, the hats. I will say there were there are points where um the man with the jaunty mustache mm-hmm. um on the on the far right here um there's moments where I'm like oh like you're kind of like an indie like band dude mm-hmm. um he might be the then, villain of the season he's like hey i'm here oh, to yeah. play the game no he, he definitely like he's twirling that mustache <laughs> at some point you best believe like that is yeah. getting he's world giving but villain of the season it's I, he just looks out of place to me with the cowboy hat motif mm-hmm. i just feel like there's something that doesn't add up for me with this guy um i have questions okay all right <laughs> Then the uh, third team to check in uh, is going to be Team Philly Forever. Uh, Now, spoiler alert, Team (laughs) Philly Forever. Uh, It's going to be a rough night for Team Philly Forever. Philly Uh, for one episode. (laughs) Yeah, Philly Philly for (laughs) one episode. Iteration of the team. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, here's uh, Team Philly Forever. Now, yeah. two of these people are married. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, Erica is- and Anthony. Marriage. Yes. Okay. Erica <laughs> they have a marriage. Anthony. Yes. So, the woman yeah. here is married to this tall, lanky guy that yes. is to the right, not next to the two guys who looks like it could be like a twin twist. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of. There were One of them points- is Mike. It, I really appreciate that they have the um the jerseys like the the basketball pinny type jersey that has the team names on it because this is what I was complaining about on on uh, what was the show we watched Fight to Survive where mm-hmm. I was like I need give me a uniform or a color or something to to indicate who people are because there are numerous numerous people on this cast that look like those two men mm-hmm. like. Take yeah. take the cowboy hats off of a couple of the guys from Team OK. Like th- those are all the same men to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so I appreciate that they are at least putting them in somewhat of a uniform. Yeah, point. Team Philly. <laughs> do they actually know each other? They like live on the same block. What's their no deal? these? Yeah. Well, there's the one guy the the guy that looks like Mike and isn't Mike. Uh, sorry <laughs> to him. I maybe I'll learn Fake your Mike. name next episode. Yeah. Um. It, Mike's buddy. I think that Mike's so so Erica and Anthony who are married they said that their kid is in a relationship with Mike's daughter and so but I thought they're when like they, little kids yes exactly which is weird mm-hmm. and then also yes. later in the episode that they say they they play beer pong water pong with their children mm-hmm. um so yeah. i like i don't okay. know what's going on here, i don't know what's but, going on here okay. but apparently like their children are also friends so yeah. and then and there was like a comment about like living around the corner from each other so i do think that this group is actually like friends and they they live nearby and hang out i mean literally two of them are married so okay the team that comes in fourth in the four in the first competition, this is the Derby squad. Uh, yeah. These people are not lifelong friends, but at least uh, some version of co-workers in that they are all on a roller derby team. They have the picture with the most swag. Uh, yeah. And they also were the group that chose uh, swag. The because, only group, yes. Yes, uh, which involved them getting naked. So uh, these women had to get completely naked at one point here during the buddy games. So yes. uh, that happened. These, these are not, this is not your mama's comps here. Like there, there's points where I'm like, oh, okay, so this isn't a family show. Um, it's, but they have to blur everything, so it kind of. That's is. why I they. Mean, if you that's why they agreed to water it. Pong, uh, kids can watch buddy games. <laughs> yeah, um, that was that was fun. I I think it was a ridiculous option, and these four women said, I'm, "I'll take my clothes yeah. off and yeah. run." Yeah. Okay. And I it, and I not the first time it's happened on them. CBS reality TV. Exactly. I mean, you get blurred out if you're wearing a small enough bikini. So they had mm-hmm. the right idea. I was like. 
wh yep. what do we care? We're trying to win this. Yeah, they don't care. They're here to make a big impression, the roller derby yeah. ladies. And uh, they got completely uh, butt ass naked and yeah. <laughs> uh, it even caused Anthony from Team Philly to remark. There's vaginas and boobies flying all next to us. <laughs> the laugh you're hearing is his wife. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> She's yeah. like, yes, there There's were vaginas, vaginas and boobies flying all next to us. Yeah, my wife would not be laughing if I said that. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> She'd be like, did you get a good look? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's what like, happened what was... Uh, what did you want what me to do? I, to I do? was playing the buddy games. <laughs> oh, I bet you want to be buddies with her. Yeah. You want to role play this, Rob? Is this helpful? Mm -hmm. No, no, I do not. <laughs> You're like, no, no I'm you. actually triggered by this. Um, What I loved about this team, like, I, I just love their energy. They're very fun. But um, so I don't know all of their names. Uh, I know the Nobody one on does. the... Far. Yeah, and they all have short form nicknames because that's what you do with your buddies. Um, the one on the far left with the glasses, her her nickname is Shu, um, S H U. I, I I'm assuming it's her last name, but so <laughs> yeah. her and then the girl with the short blonde Jackie hair, Jackie Shu, Melissa Bergland, okay. Shaggy uh, uh, Shengle, Shaggy Plummer, and yeah, so someone's Rachel shaggy. Johnston. They're from Los Angeles. Okay. So at least these people like probably see each other on a regular basis. So I like, I'm giving them, they have more synergy than the pageant Queens. Mm -hmm. Um, but I loved the moment when they ran up and, um, you know, they're completely butt ass naked, as you said, and they greet Josh Demel and he's like, Oh, okay. Let me look away. Uh, and the, the one girl was like, Oh, I hide myself. And she was just like, that's mm -hmm. it. Check, that's it. check out the goods. And I'm like, I respect that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, the team that came in fifth in the first competition, it was Team Pride, Jenny. And Team Pride, I don't think they're so lifelong friends. Four, right? What's was, that? Wasn't, oh, sorry. Philly came. Yeah, sorry. You're right. You're correct. Yes. Sorry, this, this is the this first is the competition. One. Yeah, Team Pride. Okay. And uh, they're not lifelong friends, but it seems like they're actually friends. They hang out. Yes. Team Pride. Yeah. I believe that these people are friends and that they we're not just placed together. Um, and they, you know, they, they talk about how, um, they all have like very good social skills. They're very good with like connecting with people. So like, this is potentially a team to look out for. Um, and they talk about how like it's pride beyond like LGBTQ plus you know, proud community, of but also they're yeah. proud of their friendship and all of that. Um, I, I thought there, there's some fun characters there. We didn't get to see a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I feel like in the premiere episode. So yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, they're fun. And then oh, Jenny, I they came in third. Oh my gosh. What did I have I'm it wrong thing. in my notes? No. I mean, I believe you. No, they did come. I, yeah. So the order of the, of the, yeah. um, what was it called? The curveball competition. So, okay. Team OK first, pageant queens. Third was Team Pride. Then the Derby Girls. Then Philly. Jenny, thank you for holding me this accountable. This is very important. Yes. I, I'm sorry. I, I, couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't let I you to, disparage to the, myself. Third, yes. the third place team of Team Pride. Yes. OK. <laughs> so, sorry. I got it twisted. <laughs> Philly Forever. Uh, I had in my notes that Philly Forever said this. At, at, There's at, vaginas and boobies flying all next to us, and that made me think that as I'm looking they at my right notes, after. that they were came right after the. the, the no, they were. Prince. No, I mean Team Philly was still trying to lift that giant sack. Um, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and, and they weren't the team boobies. that got naked. Yeah, the boobies and vaginas were flying past them. Yes. Okay. And then probably the biggest disappointment of episode number one, we had Chicago's finest who showed up. <laughs> And uh, they were actually the worst uh, in terms of these competitions. So these are Chicago they were team police not officers. that okay. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> and they were Chicago police officers, and they look like they're all like in pretty good shape and ready to go. And okay, we're gonna like if this was the Amazing Race, you'd say okay, this team's got it. Yeah, bet and on then them. they just were not good at the buddy games. <laughs> too. Yeah, the buddy games I think was just too like off the wall for them. Yeah. And I mean, I think the big issue with the curveball challenge where they had to pick their their option, the um, the drag option that the two teams that came in last being them and Team Philly chose, like they're like, we're strong. We can lift our own body weight. But apparently like, these bags that they had to drag together were like quite hefty. Um, yeah, and not they just hefty bags it. filled with no. trash. 
No, I don't think it was a hefty brand garbage bag. I think it was just some sort of other sack. Mm -hmm. Um, but kind yeah, kind of disappointing. What do you think the issue is here? What's what's going on? I don't know. I don't know if they just yeah. were like, hey, this is we gotta do everything by the book. We're police officers. Mm, uh yeah. I don't know really what the yeah. problem was. Um, I think that well, it might have come down to they they chose poorly in terms of okay. In the curveball, one team was going to come in first and get the opportunity to sabotage the yeah. other teams. And so the big thing that you had to do was decide if you're, are you going to swag, drag, or gag? Okay. And the. Rob, what were you doing? You're gagging, right? <laughs> we're gagging. So let's talk it through on <laughs> swag, drag, or gag. Okay. So. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I do feel like that swag, uh, which was get completely butt ass naked, would would be the easiest to do. Yeah, one hundred percent the easiest. Um, somehow it wasn't enough to get Team Derby, uh, to even the top or the Derby girls or whatever they're called, um, to even the top three. So yeah. I think I think it wasn't necessarily the easiest. Well, I guess you had to get naked, but then put your shoes back shoes on. Shoes back on. And that was where <laughs> the struggle was. Um, Maybe. Why, though? Like, that was the thing is, like, they were saying, like, oh, like, once I had my shoes on, it was, like, hard to, or, like, my clothes off, it was hard to put my shoes back on. Mm-hmm. But I was like, wouldn't yeah. that be easier? You have less things getting in the way, or maybe you have more things getting in the know. way. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it's more just uh, like disconcerting and like unusual of like uh, to be naked wearing uh, shoes and socks. Or is it like you know before you get the adrenaline of like, okay, this is real, it's happening, I'm naked, and I'm just gonna let it happen? Um, the nerves of you are now suddenly completely ma- naked and you have to bend over to put your shoes mm-hmm. on and there's a yeah. camera person yeah. right there like okay fully in it <laughs> right in it yes and the camera person is like there's vaginas and boobies flying all next to us <laughs> yes yeah. literally they don't have the sensor on at this point this they is, don't they're getting it they're all. getting the raw footage okay yeah and so the, that was swag okay yeah Drag we covered. That's the one it's that Chicago's finest. It was just to like uh, lug your big sack around, and <laughs> yeah. then ultimately you have to like, and that's what caused them to come in last. Okay, then there was gag, and yeah. gag was the one I was the most confused about because I'm like, <laughs> all right, here we go, gag. All right, we're gonna you're, we're gonna have gross food. Mm-hmm. Here we go. <laughs> but the the gag was seemingly. A big bowl of cold mac and cheese. This was what we call in Canada, Rob, craft Lunch? dinner. Yeah. Craft dinner. Craft this dinner. is a cold pot. And this is what probably you're eating at the buddy games. It's like Matthew cooked up a, uh, two boxes of craft dinner, drunkenly ate three spoonfuls, and then left it left on it the stove, yeah. and it got cold and curdled. And then, like, Steve came in later and was, like, very hungry and is eating the cold, curdled mac. But was cheese. it rancid? Like, I don't understand I don't why it was, was this. Is it was just, like, uh, too heavy to eat on as you were running around? I mean, it the the top three teams in this challenge all did gag, which tells me it wasn't that bad. They did say, like, they're looking at it like, oh, it's just some mac and cheese. No big deal. I'm going to eat this. And the complaints we heard were, were it was cold. And then someone said it was almost like curdled in my mouth, which... I don't think it was like rancid. I think it was literally just gross, Mm -hmm. cold mac and cheese. To me, this reminds me of a tweet that our friend Omer Zahir said recently, which is (laughs) basically on Survivor reward, eat mac and cheese. Buddy games, punishment, eat mac and cheese. Eat mac and cheese. Yes, precisely. That is that is what was happening here. Um, I I would love to know what else they're eating at the lodge. Uh, Yeah, that's why I want to see more about the lodge. Give us lodge life. Come on. We're asking. Come on, Dumile. Don't hold out on us. I know. I know. Next week, hopefully, Rob. If if yeah. if we if we hit, what's the but, eating situation? Do they have to cook for themselves? Do yeah. they just order pizza for the group? We're dying to know. Imagine they just eat pizza every single. There was a guy 
oh, there's a guy on the cast and his his tattoo. He has a tattoo not of pizza. The tattoo, I think this was Anthony from from Philly Forever. His tattoo just says the word pizza. The word pizza. And it's yeah. not a good tattoo. It's very yes. bad. Yes. The same like, guy. I think he might have done his own. Oh. Vaginas and boobies flying all next to us. <laughs> yeah. Like, of course, that is the man that has a tattoo that says the word pizza. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love Anthony. I'm sorry. He's, he's very literal. He's one to watch. He's one to yeah. watch. Jenny, let's talk about the second part of the episode because, okay, that was the first part and that was yes. all just to determine what order you could go into the house and who was mm -hmm. going to get to sabotage. Team OK, they won the curveball. And so yeah. they're the Is ones there a that... strategy here? Sorry. Like, do you... because if you're one of these teams, there's not even a, for the curveball, there's not even a disadvantage to coming in last unless you think that the first place team is going to use that as an excuse to give you the sabotage. Mm -hmm. But like, if you know that you're not going to, if you know, just based on when you saw someone run uh, naked, maybe uh, that you're not going to win. Do you really care about, what place you come in at this point when there's no difference between coming in second and like fifth or sixth, because if anything, I thought like this was, this could have been bad for the pageant girls who came in second because team. You could okay. Get sabotaged. Who, exactly. Like I think almost doing too good, but not good enough. It puts mm -hmm. a target on you. Yeah. yeah. That didn't end up happening, but I just think that like, maybe think about this a little strategically here. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know if they thought about it strategically. <laughs> There's uh, because, strategy in buddy okay. games, okay? <laughs> okay, so then basically uh, the next morning, uh, Josh Dumel is going to wake everybody up. Okay, everybody, get out here. Come on, time to go see. Josh Dumel is already completely covered in the mud. Josh Literally. Dumel tests all of the buddy games stunts. Now, he's the dream team. Jeff Probst, eat your heart out, okay? Yeah. Because Josh Dumel, maybe you, once in a while you'll see Phil, like, uh, doing the thing of, like, you know, like, uh, Phil will be, like, putting, like, the last, like, domino on, like, uh, the thing that yeah. has to be assembled or something like maybe that. that. But yes. who yes. else, what other, is TJ Lavin ever, no, no. you know, I mean, he's, he would never. he's coming up on like a four wheeler with like a, a flamethrower or something cool um, and laughing, but he's not doing the actual challenges. Mm -hmm. um, Josh Jamel coming out here and just saying, I am testing this out. And also I think that he just like, he want he doesn't want to be left out. Doesn't want to be left to out. Yeah. Enjoy the fun. You know what I mean? So he has to do it for himself too. Nobody even asked for this. Josh Dumel is just throwing himself into the mud pit <laughs> to yeah. test the mud that there is something called the shocking gauntlet, Jenny. Can you explain this? Um, it was live wires, I guess. The shock. So the it, they call it the Valley of Voltage. Valley of Voltage. So yes. The game. The game. So this is the true buddy game. The first thing we did was the curveball. This is the true buddy game. It's called shockingly fun. You bust through a gate. And you get a log. And then the four of you carry said log through the valley of voltage. And that's like, this is something you're going to find with buddy games. It's like, we're coming up with fun, like alliterative names for like pieces of the comp. Like, I think that that is one of the true, you know, spirits of buddy games is like, we're having fun naming things and like making it silly. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, the shocking gauntlet of electrical wires. And so, I don't know what these wires are, but I guess as you walk through them, it, they're like hanging down on you. And if you hit one, it shocks you. Yeah, um, you're being electrocuted. Yeah. You're just casual electrocution. And I, I was all in on. <laughs> I was all in on like, I would do this. This looks really fun until, until like the shocking part. I was like, yeah. Mm. yeah. But um, I, I don't know how bad the electrical shock was. Um, but yeah, it's essentially like a obstacle course or just some sort of course. And yeah. there's a part of it that has uh, electrical wire wires that okay. shock you. And then you also needed to acquire uh, a ball, right? That's, yes. That was part of this also? So you retrieve an orange ball 
And my understanding is you needed to retrieve one orange ball. However, the sabotage is you have to so for the team that got sabotaged which i don't know if we said this the team team philly yes. was ultimately who uh or philly forever was who team okay picked i, I have no idea why they picked them they said yeah. that they talked to them the least mm -hmm. um weird and so they had to retrieve blue balls <laughs> they had to grab their blue balls and mm -hmm. there's four of them and so that's more of a like hindrance, I guess, on getting through. It, it can um, be. Yes, it can. Blue, blue balls can certainly be a hindrance on your success. Mm -hmm. Um, so <laughs> that's that. Those are the balls that you have to carry. Weigh you the, down for sure. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, like good luck trying to get across that buddy beam. Mm -hmm. You know, with all those blue balls. <laughs> so. <laughs> Especially fitting for Anthony after the, his... there's vaginas and boobies flying all next to us. <laughs> yeah, couldn't handle it. You couldn't was, handle it. He was team blue balls at that point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then you take your balls, and then you have to. Uh, then they. This was like real life beer pong, where you then had to basically like shoot basketballs into giant six cups. giant beer pong cups. Each person yes. needs to sink one, and then you put yourself in the beer cup, in the red solo cup. Which, like, that part didn't had red no purpose. Red solo cup. <laughs> that part had... Yeah, why didn't they... They didn't get the license to that they one. They couldn't get that song, you know. I guess. They they blew the budget on Bruce. Um, So I don't understand why you had to get into the cup. It was just, like, the final move just to get people wet <laughs> I, guess. Mm -hmm. I don't uh -oh. know you gotta get dirty you gotta get wet like we're mm -hmm. humiliating people yep. at every yeah, turn jenny here. you you know it of course <laughs> yeah it's going to get hotter it's going to get damper mm -hmm. and you're going to be in a giant beer pong cup yes and you'll ask okay. yourself what am i doing here <laughs> and ultimately uh the winner of this is going to get five thousand dollars and personally from josh demel personally from josh demel like it's not yeah. the, the rest of the money is from cbs yes. this is actually from josh demel this is his yeah. money because he want he has the utmost res utmost respect for whoever can own this life-size beer pong yeah so now, is he going to do this every week? Is he going to give five grand every episode to the team that gets first place? That's I guess so. Unclear. I guess so. Okay. Yeah. So ultimately, the bottom two teams, you know, it's always fun to talk about like what gets borrowed from what show. This is giving a little tough as nails where the first person who comes in first place, they're going to get a prize. But the bottom two teams, they are going to go into the elimination. And that's ultimately what happens here. Yes. Any highlights for you, Jenny, in terms of this competition? The, the uh, what do they call it? The loser's last stand. Well, before the... we get to the loser's last stand, the oh, whole, the... go, this oh. gauntlet. Oh, okay. Well, um, not, I mean, not really. I think, so it seems that, the sabotage, the blue ball sabotage that Team OK gave to, to Philly Forever was actually quite the hindrance um, because we heard from Philly Forever that like they own beer pong. And I think if they had gotten to that point of the obstacle course a lot sooner, they wouldn't have been in the bottom. Yeah. Once they get them the blue balls, they couldn't think yeah. straight. Yeah, they can't make those they shots. Themselves. Yeah, yeah, they were they were really off their game. Um, and again, the the cops are just like they stink. <laughs> they're pooping the bed, you know. They're not like, what are you doing? They were not Chicago's finest. They were not. They were. Yeah, not certainly. This was not, not great finest. representation of either the city of Philadelphia or the city of Chicago. <laughs> yeah, honestly, and you know. I mean, pick pick your pick your team here, but I don't think that either city was like being like, you did it, guys. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, no, disappointing showing from okay. these two great cities. All right, so Jenny, let's talk about the elimination battle. What what is it called? 
Losers last stand. Losers so be- last stand. Okay, yeah, this yeah. is going to be. I believe be this is something will happen every week. Similar to on Tough as Nails, the OT, uh, like the challenge. It looks like mm-hmm. okay, the teams will battle. One team will ultimately lose. I thought the whole team was going to go home, uh, but it turns out no. Just one member is ultimately going to go home here from this battle. So still, yeah. after one night of buddy games. 23 are left. <laughs> are you going to get to know all 23? Absolutely not. No. But th- I do feel like they kind of spoiled this because in the beginning of the episode, when they showed us kind of the montage of like what this show is going to be about, there was the clip that showed uh, Josh Demel being like, I've got good news. I've got bad news. Like, you know, you aren't, your team is still in the game, but you're going to have to eliminate one of your own. And so I was like, this is either a twist at a certain point. Like it's like the equivalent of the non-elimination leg on the amazing race, or this is part of the game mechanic every week. Um, so, and I was like, there's no way on the very first episode that if I know that they're going to do this at some point that they're going to get rid of four people and i also just felt like um in terms of casting like you're gonna get rid of anthony he he might see more boobies and vaginas and talk about it like you're gonna get rid of him right off the way like no you're not eliminating that whole team um so i felt like i was kind of spoiled by the edit in that Mm -hmm. like i knew that they were only gonna they were gonna have to make them eat one of their own so this was an interesting competition, I will say, one that I've never seen on the 20 some odd years of uh, reality TV that I've watched. So basically this was all right, we are going to strap like jingle bells to your hands and feet and then put like a flag football flag like yep. uh, on, on your hip. On, yeah, on your hip. OK, and then we're going to blindfold you. And so you're sort of like listening for the jingle bells yes. from your opponent. And also it's like you're in a pen with like bales of hay, like as obstacles mm-hmm. as well. Like it's not just like a clear open arena. Like you are starting on opposite ends of like a circle type thing. And then there's literally obstacles that are just, I think, hay. Um, and so you have to find your opponent and grapple them to get their flag it's capture the flag but it was i thought the bell part was really funny like it just felt like they were animals or something Mm -hmm. like i don't know it was like attaching a bell to like your cat so you can hear it like jingling towards you i don't know it's very kind of like kind of like sneak up on the other person and then wait for them to like their move their bell and then just like pounce on them and they are blindfolded we did we mention the fact that they're blindfolded Mm -hmm. so you like that's you're you're relying on your your sense of sound, I guess, mm-hmm. or maybe smell. I don't know. Maybe sense someone did shower. Yeah. And maybe you're sensing that maybe. And so we get to one-on-one matchups. It ultimately comes down to a final showdown between Philly forever and Chicago's finest Mike from Philly forever. He wants to challenge Sarge in the final battle. Yes. So they had the first, so th- how it worked was like the, they alternating turns choosing their opponent. And because Philly forever, I guess was in a better position at the end of the child, the, the buddy game, I guess they chose first. So they did. So Mike challenges Sarge gets the first flag. And so they, and it's first to three flags is the winner. And Philly forever. They had a nice lead going. They were at two, two zero. All they need is one more. Mm. This is easy, right? Or I'll like just get one more and it's over. It should be, but ultimately, <laughs> if for Mike, he is going to go down to Sarge. And so ultimately, Philly turned out to not be forever. No, like at least not this iteration mm-hmm. of this team is not forever. Um, and I think so. Mike explains so. So, so what happened was Mike beats Sarge in the first round. They get they finally get down to 2 2. They they blow a 2 0 lead. It's tied at two. Next, next person wins, and it's Philly Forever's pick. 
Mike says, let's do this. Give them the matchup they want. I want. I don't want to do this the easy way. And he challenges Sarge again, and Sarge beats his ass. And yep. so, okay. <laughs> and then, it. so Josh Jamel, okay, good news, bad news. Bad news is you got eliminated, but it's only one person, so you get to stay at the lodge, pick somebody to go home. And so we had where Anthony's wife, Erica, Erica. Yeah. It's like, should I just go home? Should like, uh, would it be good if the girl goes home? No, Erica, <laughs> stand up. Yeah. Well, I what I thought was going to happen here was like, and again, I I I I'm deep in the buddy games edit. I was Mythos, reading. Yeah. I was reading things from the edit earlier in the episode. So the budget. But, <laughs> the budget exactly. I thought, well, is there going to be a rationale of one of the married couple goes home because yeah. they're like, you know what, like we'll go one of us can go home back to the kids or whatever and then i was like well of course it's gonna be the woman um but I, but erica herself immediately was like yeah. would you guys be stronger just guys and i'm like well we don't know what's coming up yeah um somebody needs really to be here. erica yeah that you, you you're gonna go home and let anthony be all There's vaginas and boobies flying all next to us that's facts think it's about like, it, erica erica you gotta stick around he's Somebody's looking gonna out. watch this guy <laughs> um and then i think at one point anthony proposed rock paper scissors mm -hmm. yeah and then <laughs> turns out mike from philly forever says hey i you know what that if i was gonna be the first person out i could get home for my son's birthday so yeah. i'm gonna go home and see my boy <laughs> and every rob everyone's <laughs> crying like other teams yeah. I don't know how long they've been here at this point. I think maybe 24 hours. <laughs> okay. Um, everyone they have is to quarantine stopping. quarantine for 14 days for COVID, maybe. Rob, I am a baby. I like I am soft as baby s, as I have said many mm -hmm. times on the on this But they this sent podcast. Mike home from Colombia. Like they didn't just have him stick it out at Ponderosa. Well, that would be really sad as if he mm -hmm. thought he he was heading home for Julian's birthday. And they're like, actually, you're going to a hotel room. You are part of the Buddy Games jury. Yes. <laughs> you have been sequestered. We'll see you back here on finale night. Yeah. <laughs> to vote for the winner of Buddy Games. I don't know if he made it don't home go for anywhere. Julian's birthday. Yeah. Um, but I just like couldn't believe how all the teams were just sobbing um about that, Mike that's leaving. what happens you lose a buddy that this is it's like, real it is kind of dark that they're making like these are real life friends and they're like and now you vote out one of your own <laughs> yeah i like that part i didn't see that twist fun. coming and yeah. hopefully you know the tease at the beginning of the episode and at the end of the episode really did make it seem like that there is a lot of drama to come I hope on so. buddy games yeah. sadly i will say i didn't think we got that tonight no in but rob one. We got to set up we it's a slow burn. Yeah, you got to you got to explain what the concept is. We we have to But now we're in it. We're in it now and I, like you know, we got we got boobies and vaginas in the first episode, Flying but I want to see sure. more next week. And I don't mean that. I just mean like fireworks, drama, um silly stuff. Uh so I think that there is potential here. I mean, at, I'm at least I was pleasantly surprised that there were game mechanics. There were ways to be eliminated. There are stakes. Mm -hmm. There is money like this is already a lot more than some of the things that we've covered sure. in so terms. There's of, a like, lot a of things here that we like. Uh, yes. I would just say that we want to get to know our personalities a mm -hmm. bit more. We'd like to see more of the shenanigans going on back at the lodge let's see a yeah. little bit more of lodge life mm -hmm. and then uh, let's see a little bit more of like yeah partying who's hooking up yes rob really wants people to be hooking up. i do <laughs> i, I want to see people hooking up but not just people hooking up uh it's not like hey i need to see i i want <laughs> i want people to be cheating on their spouses on buddy games no, I, so I you're like actually <laughs> Yes. You're rooting for Anthony so, to, to meet so someone. This, this yeah. is why you're pissed. Is that actually sorry, Eric, Erica, if you're staying. listening, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would like some drama. No, like. I mean, well, Jenny, like, look, what was the biggest thing that happened this whole year? 
Scandaval, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Isn't that what's going to put buddy games on the map? If somebody like, what if somebody like, uh, what if somebody uh, ends up like falling for Josh Dumel? Is he married? I don't know. He, I think he's at least, I know well, he's I, just I, announced I, we a new baby. Right, right. So, <laughs> and we know he's had some famous relationships. Yes, but, uh, yes, Josh Dumel, come on the podcast. Tell us. Let's the, talk tell about us, it. Yeah. What's, I, bet, I bet there's been some real life uh, juicy stories that happened in the real life oh, buddy for games. Sure. We want to know about them. Yeah. Like, do you think they're staying at the lodge the whole time? No, they're no. going into they're going into the local pub and they meet some people and yeah. you know, probably like, give us the true the vaginas and boobies flying all next to us. <laughs> Come on, Josh. Exactly. <laughs> and so I and I mean the the alcohol starts flowing and maybe people are complaining about their spouses, like that's yeah. the that's the spirit. It's like none of these people are like super, super young. Like this is not the young, sexy singles yeah. that you were talking about. I don't know. Like this could is team, messier team because <laughs> okay hit it off with any of the pageant queens. I mean, they said they share a bathroom. That's why they weren't gonna target them. So I don't know. What does sharing a bathroom here. mean? Like what's what's happening in the bathroom? Meet you in the shared bathroom in 20. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So that's okay. what I hope to see in Buddy Games. We're gonna yeah. Buddy Games is a hit for us, right? It's at this present time, Jenny, it, it gave let's me round enough. out our, our podcast buddy games team. Who who's coming with us? Who's coming with the us? Buddy on games. Yeah. The buddy games like from from the universe. Because I wanted to say, Rob, like, we need to do like podcaster buddy games. Podcaster like that's my dream. Games. Okay. Like R H A P retreat. And I'm the Josh Dumel. Yes. Okay. Precisely. Okay. Um, I think it'd be so effing fun. Yeah, I'm pretty um, sure it'll be an messy. HR violation if we have a yes. thing where everybody has to get naked. I don't. Yeah, think we, we can, can maybe that. like revise. Like, we don't have to do it exactly the way that Josh Dumel wants to do it. We don't have to get naked. Um, I don't want you to lose your business no. over this. Please but no. I think it'd be really funny, <laughs> and yeah. you could turn it into like. A web show. I think people would watch that. Okay. All right. If Buddy Games is a big enough hit, I think that that's yeah. a team building activity for RHAP. Okay. I think if, it's great. All right. If we get to 4,000 reviews in <laughs> the uh, Hit or Quit podcast feed, uh, we'll set it up. Okay. We will Go set to up. Rob has a website.com slash hit or quit feed to leave us your ratings and reviews and let us know whether you think we should continue on with our coverage here of Buddy Games, the yes. new smash hit on CBS and paramount and Jenny, Rob, this, the the retreat might be the only way that we finally get the mike bloom and puya race oh that would be huge, that so, would be huge. okay you we need to will this into existence yeah puya it was it, he'd be on like one of the teams with his spouse just exactly. like yeah, erica and anthony so yeah be there will be <laughs> no boobies and vaginas i promise no. all right <laughs> Jenny, what else are you working on these days? What else am I working on? Rob, we just had a wild BB25 recap last night. It was <laughs> yes. bugle were out and blowing. The farm animals were out. Yeah. It was a it was a, a piggy pals palace. Um so if you have not caught up on BB25, uh that was a fun time and if you are also behind on our post uh game coverage of claim to fame season two we spoke with gabriel cannon the winner of claim to fame that was a really fun interview i'm hoping some more of that will be coming um and other than that i'm just uh vibes only oh and what, what i don't know that's it right okay we have anything else no well, we're coming me. back next week with more uh yeah. more buddy games okay Lock and life. So look, this CBS Thursday night, it is oh a party because I'm I'm all over this CBS Thursday night. I've got the coverage <laughs> from the Big Brother 25, from the Buddy Games, and then also I'll be having exit interview from the challenge. I believe that I am the only human on the planet Earth covering all three shows wow. on CBS Thursday night. So check out all of my coverage at robhasawebsite.com. Thank you so much for being here. We're looking forward to reading your reviews at robhasawebsite.com slash hit or quit feed. Jenny, I'll see you next week for more buddy games. Take care, everybody. Have a good it, one. Bye.